Engineer 775, day one on this brisk job. This is a little different than the last time I was here a few weeks ago. Uh, so we just drove up from South Carolina. It was 80 when I left. It was 23 here this morning. But that's okay. It's beautiful. <laughs> drove straight through, 1,100 miles. The truck did awesome. And uh, just it was. it's nice to have a nice mobile office. Got a lot of work done on the road. A lot of phone calls made. Checked in with a lot of people. And, uh, and made it up here. So, uh, what's going on here? We've got 33 modules on this roof. And let me tell you how they're arranged. There's two, two strings of nine for the solar converter. And then there's a string of nine and a string of, sorry, a string of eight and a string of seven for the Sun Bandit. And they are brought down and landed over here in some disconnects. Last time I was here, I was putting the water system in and the generator, and since then they've got a generator shed. So out here, we've landed, we've got uh, solar hot water, one and two for the two of the four elements on the Sun Bandit, and then we have our IMO disconnect for the array, and uh, bringing the conduits into the basement for landing our solar in the water heater and in the solar arc. I'll show you that. So. Again, this has been wanting to do a cold climate job. Everything from the trenching to uh, working with a contractor here to help. It's hard to work 1,100 miles from home, but we're getting it done. And we're right on the border. That's Canada over there. This property line, I mean, the property line of this property is, is uh, the Canadian border. And sometimes almost daily border patrols coming through here. So, it was so nice and warm the last time I was here. It's not now, but it is a beautiful spot. Enjoying it. Back to the basement. We're going to wire up the inverter. Let me show you what we got going on in there. It's been a race to get this place ready for the winter. So, the goal here eventually is to put up more solar. That's all I could get on this roof. And they're going to build another building over here that we'll put solar on. And uh, hopefully there's a lot of wind, as you can hear. We're going to put a wind turbine up around the corner. And I really want to run one of the elements on wind. And the cool thing about that, when the wind's really whipping, I can be putting heat into the slab. So the radiant floor system is done. I showed you the heat crete last time, I believe. Right, I'm going to take you up and show you the generator. It's an RS30, 125 amp Cummins. Uh, liquid propane generator and we brought power down and landed in this nice eat and disconnect some junction boxes running over to our panel we're going to feed the generator directly into the solar inverter we're also going to dump some while the generator is running because there's a lot of capacity we're also going to throw some energy into the water heater so let me show you all that Okay, here's the heart of the system down here in the basement. We're installing the Solark 8K inverter, and it is going to be the hub to communicate with the generator. We haven't done this before, but in a, we're in a complete off-grid setup. We're going to land the generator in the Solark. We're going to control the generator by the Solark using a percent state of connect on the batteries. So the batteries are from North Star. This is the first time I've used the, used the North Star batteries. These are the pure lead carbons. You can see them down here. They're 210 amp hour. Real light, 152 pounds a piece. And we'll have an 840 amp hour battery in this nice rack. It is breakered here. Uh, it's a positive bus bar, negative bus bar here. And uh, we got some 4 rock cable we're going to run and land on the left side. So again, the uh, the way the inverter, this is kind of the simplest way to set this thing up. We're going to take the generator that's coming in, was coming in, over here we're going to Polaris and come down and come into the the grid input. There's a, I don't know if you can see it, probably not, but there's the generator controls which run all the way up to the generator, I'll show you. And uh, so there'll be some settings and some programming to make sure 
I think we're going to go like 70%, uh, 30% discharge off the top with the battery bank and then the generator will start if it hits that, if the solar can't keep up. Again, we're only putting on uh, 18 modules, that's all we could fit on the roof for the solar arc. So eventually we'll be adding wind um, for this site, we'll be adding more solar, and so we're only using half of the cap solar capability of the inverter right now. Um, we can take up to 11,000 watts of solar on the inverter. So we've got a nice wiring trough here connecting the panels, and uh, we're going to pop out of here with the battery cables come up and land it. So looking really awesome so far. The electrician up here has done, he got a, way ahead of me. He's been working two days hard, and so it's nice to get here and have it all already done. So shout out to Travis Ramo on here. Um, anyway, he might not want that, but I gave it to him. Um, and now we switch over to the Sun Bandit. These are the Sun Bandit monitors. You haven't seen me do a Sun Bandit job yet. I've, um, Actually, got three of these in process. One here, one in Ontario, and one in Wyoming. And uh, so this is a the, their 100 gallon LP tank, and it has four elements in it. And we're hooking two elements. That's what those two monitors are for. Man, is that blurry? That is awful. Sorry about that. This camera is used to South Carolina weather, and it's just not tolerating a Canadian border. So. Uh, if this is blurry, I apologize. It looks blurry to me. Uh, anyway, the Sun Bandit tank is a 100 gallon LP tank. We'll go into more of what this is gonna do, but the goal here is that this tank, not only is gonna supply the domestic hot water for the cabin, but this floor system has already been built with the heat creep product. Look at the blur. All right, this is a radiant floor system here, and eventually this floor system here will have radiant heat in it too. So we're using a combination of radiant tech technology and then a local contractor is taking it from there. This floor was just brutal. It's, it's old floor system. There's a lot of drilling. The floor's going three, four different directions, so it's not fun in terms of installing radiant. But anyhow, back to the Sun Bandit. We're going to have four inputs. Two on solar, two elements running on solar, PV direct to heat water. We're going to have the generator, because the generator is a 30 K kW generator, we're going to dump um, while it's running, we're going to go ahead and dump some energy into the into the radiant floor system through the Sun Bandit. So, the cool thing here, let me just see if I can explain this correctly. The Solark has like a 190 amp charger built in, so it will be able to charge these batteries. And these batteries you can be charged at an unlimited rate, according to the spec sheet. So I can dump in, you know, 10 kW at a time into the batteries for a super fast charge. I should be able to charge these batteries fully back up from 50% discharge to 103 hours, which is going to save a lot of propane. And then the solar will turn them off. So I'm going to be using like 10 kW for charging batteries. I'm going to put, you know, like four, depends on how many elements, I could put 7 kW into the water heater. And then the solar will let you pass through 12 kW to the loads to power the house and the, there's going to be some other cabin subfed from this panel as well. And so I'm going to use that 30 kW generator. You might say it's totally overkill, but it's not taking into account battery charging at the rate I'm charging, heating the floor and running loads. Thankfully I can pass 12 kW through there. Shouldn't need more than 12 kW in an off-grid uh, cabin. If you do, you're doing something wrong. Okay, so that's it. So we're gonna come out of the Solark. We're gonna land um, a 50 amp breaker in here to power this panel. And that's where we will pass through and, and run the loads for the cabin. So real excited to get this thing connected and tested uh, this week. Be able to start this generator off of the, off the Solark is gonna be really, really cool. So we've used the Solark in a lot of different applications. We're, this is a completely off-grid application. We've done a hybrid battery backup system, and we're about to do just a grid tie with the Solar, which makes the Solar a very, just a t flexible uh, inverter. Again, it's transformerless. It has won a lot of new, a lot of awards recently at SPI and other shows. So really, this is the first time I've put it in a 100% off-grid application. So we'll see what she does. All right, this is day one. Let's get to work. And here has been my office for the week. We're looking into Canada. It's just a lovely place. It's been brutally cold and then nice and warm today and sunny. Great for testing out our solar system. 
not bad okay the end of day two following up this is my third visit to the site and uh, below us is a radiant floor heating system there are the radiant tubes coming up they're going to be heated by a sun bandit 100 gallon LP tank LP is the backup we have four elements in here that are going to be heated off of solar in a variety of ways I'll go into that we have a 840 amp hour battery it's a North Star battery and uh, it's a pure lead carbon fast charge battery and with a nice battery rack from North Star that is fully breakered so that is nice having the DC disconnects we run some 4 aught cable over to the heart of the system which is the Solark the Solark 8K is well, let's talk to you just kind of show you what's going on here um, you can see the, the screen is very intuitive what's going on uh, green lights are of course important DC AC systems normal you can see the I'm making about four kilowatts out of a possible 5.3 on the roof today end of October and it's like four o'clock in the afternoon so that's really impressive on this system it's totally off grid so I have the generator which I did just start up um, based on percent of battery charge the SOC and I was able to automatically start the generator there's a two wire start relay in this inverter and I was able to start the generator which, with it that's awesome and then the loads are only running about 450 watts in the house right now the battery is charging you can see the energy going into the battery and that's it and we're feeding this panel got a lot more room there's gonna be a couple other buildings and shops added to this so we'll be able to pass through um, power to the variety of buildings from the solar the solar can pass through 12 kW from the generator if need be um, but it has a great surge capability so I don't think we're gonna have a problem on this site so we treat the so the, the the generator coming in which is is actually coming in through here is is rerouted and fed into the grid input breaker on the solar and I'll have some pictures of the the internal workings of where things are landing and how that all works so we're just topping off our battery here at the end of the day we're at 95 percent so the smart load that's the other thing this thing so again touch screen you can see what's going on with your solar you can see what's going on with everything voltages amperages what's going into the battery now and uh, 63 amps that's one thing I need to mess around with is the charger this thing has a 195 amp charger on board so I'm gonna mess around with the charger and charging settings so really cool um, pretty easy to use battery setup again you put in your amp hours of your battery I don't know if you can see that or not yeah, there you go max it just so I have it set at max a charge and I'm using the battery percent state of charge to control the generator okay my goal is hopefully not to even use the generator occasionally the fan will come on it's it doesn't come on very often it's a very quiet inverter quiet setup it's back out here still making 4kw and running our loads and charging the battery so we'll let her we'll let her go so all right um, these are the monitors for the Sun Bandit so everything that you'll see on the roof the 33 modules we've got it 18 modules are coming to the solar and the remaining modules um, are going to yeah 15 are going to the Sun Bandit 8 and 7 landing into the top of these two two elements which are here on the Sun Bandit and then you have the complements over here boom boom when the generator is running it's actually running that water heater and then this one will be where we're going to hook the smart load to to run that one so smart load which is basically diversion or dump control generator so um sun bandit inverter 2400 and then another 2400 sun bandit inverter system there so this is my favorite coolest off-grid installation thus far this thing is so awesome and there's no power for miles and the only thing I couldn't do was a software update because there's no internet. But eventually they'll have internet and there is a dongle right there 
and then I'll be able to push the latest, greatest software updates and even improve the efficiency more as they as they work and tweak tweak the software. So that is it. I'm going to go show you the generator now that's being controlled by this inverter and the battery state of charge. And here we are up at the side of the hill where the propane field is. Five 1,000 gallon tanks. And feast your eyes on that beauty. That is a 30 kW Cummins liquid propane generator. They're going to have a kind of a hanging tarp in the front here. Just want to keep this baby out of the snow. It is an enclosed unit. This is going to be a multi-purpose building obviously for the generator and some other things. We poured the slab the last time I was here a couple weeks ago. About a month ago I guess. That's the old generator shed. So she is a beauty. We were able to start her two different ways. Um, so we started it with the Solark today several different ways with a start voltage or SOC connect and we started with the remote there's a remote in the house that can fire up the generator you can fire it up anytime you want That's some flexibility so it's been quite a cool project they painted the house they painted the roof and before we got the solar on it and then the last time I was here, we put in the water system, which is up here. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go check it out. There's the overflow from the water system, cranking away. Gotta love solar water pumping. I'm gonna take a peek in here, see what's going on. Oh my goodness. Crystal clear spring water. <laughs> 